Hey everybody, the Bonga's back. Welcome to part 41 of Let's Play Pokemon Diamond. Alright, I got all my team completely healed up, but let's take a look at my uh, moves. This one doesn't look too bad. This one doesn't look too bad. This one looks really ravaged when you look at Giga Drain. Flamethrower looks okay. That looks okay. That one barely got any use. So, I think this would be a good time to use up one of my ethers. Alright, so what are we up against? We're up against the Pokemon Champion. Do I have any better moves to work with? I could consider just giving up Spark or Thunderfang. I think that may be a good idea. If I'm going against somebody with a high defense. And chances are I'm going second anyway, so flinching doesn't matter. Let me get rid of Thunderfang. And replace it with Thunderbolt. There we go. Now we got something. I know I could have looked around in the overworld to find Psychic, too. But I'm not going to worry about it too much. Do I want Dragon Pulse? Probably not. Uh, anything else that would be good? Grass Knight is Grass Not. the very situational. Can't really rely on that. I think I'm just going to hedge my bets and hope for the best. I did save before this, so we're still good, in case I lose a lot of my progress. Then again, even if I do lose my progress, battling the Elite Four is actually a great way to level up. Have you been keeping well? Thank you for Mount Coronet. I'm truly grateful. Together, you and your Pokémon overcame all the challenges you faced, however difficult. It means that you triumphed over any personal weaknesses, too. The power you learned, I can feel it emanating from you. But that's enough talk. Let's get on with why you're here. As the Pokemon League Champion, I accept your challenge. Alright, we're battling Cynthia. Ran into her many times, and she's the champ. Starting off the Spirit Tomb. Alright, this Pokemon is Ghost and Dark. Therefore, has no weaknesses of any kind. Plus, it also has pressure. Alright, so to nip this in the bud, I might as well just try to flash it right now. Ugh, that's Dark Pulse. Okay, I still have over half my health. And a Psychic, too. Okay, this should make it relatively useless. As Embargo. So we got three of its moves figured out. And a Silver Wind. So Dark, Psychic, Dark, and Bug. I don't think Thunderbolt's gonna do much. But let's try it out anyway. A little over half. Oh, now it used Embargo. So I can't use items. Spark has less power overall, but does Spirit Tomb have really low physical defense? No. At least not for what I'm using. Actually, let me use Spark anyway, because then I can force Spirit Tomb to have need a full restore. If I do that, that'll save me from having to worry about a full restore on a tougher Pokemon. Well, I know you're going to heal anyway, so I might as well just... 
I could heal. Let me just use a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt might be the way to go for this fight. Oh, it's gonna withdraw! Into Gastrodon! Okay, well that made Thunderbolt useless. But I'm now allowed to use items. Not that it matters. Sludge Bomb. Okay, it's neutral, it's fine. I'm gonna use a Leech Seed. Sludge Bomb, again, no big deal. And I'm gonna get some of that health back anyway. Might be a big deal if I get poisoned. Luckily, I have full restores. So I think Cynthia has four full restores and has used one. Yeah, I better use the full restore anyway, in case I take a chunk of damage on top of the poison. So I think the best thing for me to do, all things considered, Earthquake's not is gonna do so little. I should just spam curse. Worst case scenario, I go against a fire type. And I don't think Cynthia has one. So as long as I keep, like, Curse Spam, I could have a pretty good tank. Oh, and also a Stone Edge. Well, luckily he only has five of those. Or she only has five of those. I use curse a few more times. It's gonna make me super slow, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. Now, if I can just make her use another full restore, then we're in business. Sludge bomb is, is that physical? Not really noticing any difference in the amount of resistance I have to it. So I think it's special. Alright, so far so good. I'll just do another curse. Rather than just heal right away. As long as I run into you know, like mostly non-flying Pokemon, I got a really good plan. One more. Now I can start going to town on her. Let's take her down. Alright. Let's go with the No, it's not gonna heal. Okay, does it only do, like, the heal check whenever I faint a Pokémon? 
Because it was a spirit tomb and I didn't faint it. Did good. You gonna bring back that spirit tomb? Yep, spirit tomb's coming back. Oh, the spirit tomb exclusively uses special moves. So I have no idea how much damage I can take to it. Okay, you know what? If it's like that, we're fine. Now I got a really high-powered earthquake coming your way. All part of the master plan. Good, spirit tomb's down. It's two of our Pokemon defeated. Milo Tick. Okay, if Milo Tick has Ice Beam, I could be screwed. Let's just use a Hyper Potion. Milo Tick can be a pretty nasty tank to go against. It's not a high attacker, but it has really good special resistance. Okay, I take that back. It actually is a high attacker. Just gotta wait for it to do something else. Before I can start employing my uh, strategy of uh, high damage. It has Mirror Coat. Does that have counter? Hope it doesn't use counter. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. Ooh, not even a crit either. And that is why you curse numerous times. Roserade. Okay, so far so good. Extra sensory, I can handle that. Okay, if I'm doing my math, this should be Cynthia's fourth Pokemon. Damn, I'm just running through that team with Earthquake. I know there's a Garchomp next, and I know there's a Lucario next. And Earthquake should do a pretty good job against a Lucario. Especially since that one wants to use Earthquake on me. Not a wise move. Gotcha. Alright, one more. And that's Garchomp. Garchomp, of course, is the evolved form of Gabite. And it's Grounded Dragon. Level 66. I can't remember the last time I was put in a corner like this. As long as Garchomp doesn't have any special moves... Earthquake might be able to whittle it down. It has Giga Impact. Good thing I buffed. Oh, thank God. It did so little. Now it must take a turn to recharge. 
Yeah, it's neutral damage. Look at all that health it has. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, it may not even use a full restore now. Wait, I don't think it can use a full restore. Because I gotta use that recharge turn. This is it, I won! I struggled more against Lucian than I did against Cynthia. We're the league champs, baby. We did it. Just a few minutes ago, you were the most powerful challenger. And just now, you became the most powerful of all the trainers. You are now our newest champion. That was excellent! Truly, an outstanding battle! You gave the support your Pokémon needed to maximize their power! And you guided them with certainty to secure victory! You have both passion and calculating coolness! Together, you and your Pokémon can overcome any challenge that may come your way! Those are the impressions I got from our battle! I'm glad I got to take part in the crowning of Sinnoh's new champion! Come with me! We'll take the lift. I mean, I'll take the lift. You staying back here. Alright, here we go. The Hall of Champions. The room ahead is the Hall of Fame. Bonga. Your last battle was splendid! Yeah, Curse Spam and Earthquake. Really splendid. Oh! Hello, Professor Rowan! Hmm. A child I enlisted for my Pokedex project has come this far. It's only natural that I come and witness the child's crowning glory. Banga, I shouldn't call you a child anymore. You've grown into a real champion! Professor! You still enjoy the enthusiasm kids bring to your research, don't you? Banga, step this way, please. Professor Rowan, I need you over here as well. <laughs> it's been a long while since I last entered this room. If your last time here was when I became champion, then yes, that would be quite a long time ago. Banga, welcome to the Hall of Fame. Your names will be recorded for posterity here. What you're leaving are the memories of your adventures so far. It's time to record your names. You and your Pokémon. Remember, your Pokémon are partners that grew with you through many challenging battles. This machine will make a permanent record of your achievement. Yeah, baby, we're champs. Met at Route 202. I Sefi, where I met at Route 213. Then we met at Lake Verity. Rapidash, and we met at Route 211. The Chingling, I think, was also at 211, yes. And good old Zubat, we met at Orberg Mine. Look at that lineup right there! We coming at ya, baby! Full force! I feel really good about that team. I really do. Some of the Pokémon I've used, I've never really used in other teams. Such as Octillery and Chimeco. I was really glad to give them a chance. Alright, and that's it with uh, Pokemon Diamond, as I would have said if there wasn't any post-game, for which there is. Will I be doing some of the post-game? Yes, I definitely will. How much of the post-game I'm going to do? It all depends on uh, what I'm feeling. I know there's a few more Pokemon you can catch. I think you can catch Rotom in the old chateau over at Eterna Forest. 
So I'll need to probably go look for that. Shouldn't be too hard. And I think there's another psychic Pokemon you can run into that's a legendary called Cresselia. And I believe in Stark Mountain there's a legendary called Heatran. Oh, not to mention the Giratina. I think that's south of Veilstone. But we'll get to that in due time. There's a whole lot of other areas we can go to as well. I know there was one place around Sand Gem on a little path that we didn't go to yet. And of course, now that we've beaten the game, we can go to that other path near Victory Road. And we can also go to Snow Point City, take a boat that leads to like the uh, battle area. Around that place where you find the Heatran too. And some pretty tough trainers and tough Pokemon. But, I'll worry about that at another time. For now, let's just uh, enjoy the credits while we still have them. It's some pretty good music, too. Alright, that's it with the credits, and now, as soon as we open our save file, we go straight to the post-game. Oh, I'm just suddenly back home. Banga! Cole came looking for you a little while ago. I don't know what it's about, but he was shouting about you needing to get on a ship at Snow Point City. You know how impatient he is. He was gone before I could ask. Anyway, how's it going, kid? Is your project with Professor Rowan coming along? Well, I think I've seen all the Pokemon I need to see. 149. Wait, wasn't there 150 in the Sinnoh decks? 
I think there's one I'm missing. Could that be... Palkia? Yeah, it is Palkia. It's not there in the decks. I know what I need to do. Isn't that over at Celestic Town? Then I'll have to go see the Elder. Do I have to see the Elder, or was I just supposed to go over to that plaque in Eterna City? Blah, 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 okay. Maybe I am supposed to talk to her. But what house is she in? It's not this one, is it? Definitely not that one. That happeny is not a granny. Nope, you're the clerk. Because that's where your shop is. I forget where she lives. Probably the bigger house. Well, hello. You look good. I did re some research on my own since I had spot of trouble last time. Now Coronet acting up had me very concerned, too. Well, this is what I found on the shrine. It's a book, and it's quite old. See for yourself. Palkia. The Pokémon that binds the spatial dimensions, it is written. It seems that there were two Pokémon in ancient Sinnoh. They respectively stood as symbols of time and spatial dimensions. Wait, this counts as my 150th scene. There it is. Alright, let me go see Professor Rowan again. So which we should go back to Sand Jam Town. Oh, it's been a while since we've been to this place. Hi, Bonga! May I see your Pokedex? Oh my gosh! You've seen every kind of Pokemon in Sinnoh! Have you shown your Pokedex to Professor Rowan yet? I was, but I wanted to say hi to you. Oh, Bonga! You've come to show me your progress in the Pokedex? Hmm. So you've seen 150 Pokemon. Bravo, Bonga! You've recorded all the Pokémon of Sinnoh in your Pokédex! This will help immeasurably with my studies on Pokémon evolution. Greetings, Professor Rowan! It's been a very long time! I'll tell you, Sinnoh certainly is a long trip from Kanto. Of course, if it means meeting new Pokémon, there's no distance too great for the likes of us to travel. Oh, if it isn't my old colleague, Professor Oak. I should have expected as much from the world's authority on Pokemon. We always used to joke, where there are Pokemon, you'll find Oak. It's good to see yet that doesn't change one bit. Professor Oak, let me introduce you to my young assistant. This youngster has filled every page of the Sinnoh Pokedex for me. Ah, well, very glad to meet you. As you've heard, my name is Oak. I've been hearing a great deal about you from Professor Rowan lately. He's been exuberant in praise about a fantastic young trainer. I see that you live up to... No, that you surpassed his praise. You've also got an impeccable sense of timing. You see, I had an errand to run for Professor Rowan on my visit here. He asked me to bring the data for the National Pokedex, you see. So, since you're here, let me upgrade your Pokedex to the National Mode. After all... There are many kinds of Pokémon in this world of ours. Ah, it's upgraded. I'm afraid it won't be easy to complete the National Pokédex. However, I'm sure you will make an honest attempt on our behalf. Have no fear. Bongo will get the job done. By the way, Professor Oak, what compelled you to visit this region? Ah, yes. I've heard that the Pal Park is now open. If I remember correctly, it's at the end of Route 221. The Pal Park is a special system that attracts every imaginable kind of Pokémon from every region. I've come to make certain that system is operating properly. Banga, you should make an effort to visit the Pal Park, too. Oops, I'll be late for my meeting if I don't get going. Okay, it was a pleasure seeing the both of you. Bye now. Off he goes, as busy as ever. No, Banga. I have a gift here as your reward for completing the Sinnoh Pokedex. 
The Polka Radar! That's the Pokemon Radar, or just Polka Radar for short. Use it, and it'll indicate grass patches where Pokemon are lurking. I prepared that to help my field assistants put together the Sinnoh Pokedex, but you took care of that. I'm sure it'll be useful for your goal of filling the National Pokedex. Alright, so before I end the episode, why don't we go test that out? If I were to use it on Route 201, there's a lot of grass over here. Surely that would be a great spot, right? Wait, I can't use it now? Its batteries recharge as you walk. No. For some reason, I won't do it. Okay, well, anyway... I forgot to mention that I think in one of the towns you can get an Eevee. So I'll worry about that in the next episode. See you later, everyone. Thanks for watching. Okay, before I end the episode, I just realized something. You're supposed to use the Poker Radar in the grass itself. Okay, and I got what I definitely did not want, and that's a Beedoof. Wait, I use a Max Repel, I walk once, and there's a Beedoof? Are you serious? Pretty sure that's not what you get the Polka Radar. Alright, let me try that again. We need to recharge it. Give it like a few cycles, I suppose. The thing that can go wrong is if... Well... Poker radar will pick up. Okay, it went on the shaking spot. Okay, so what it does, it allows you to find different kinds of Pokemon that haven't been available until you get the national decks. But you know, people are all the rave over this national decks. So here's a Nidoran female. Obviously, I don't have a Pokemon with me that has false swipes, so... <laughs> that ain't happening. Alright, we got a Nidoran female. While it does not prefer to fight, even one drop of the poison it secretes from barbs can be fatal. Alright, I got a good name for you. Done. Oh, it's still shaking, so maybe I can get something else? That's another Nidoran female, so I'm gonna give that a hard pass. For anybody wondering why I named it Selma, when Nidoran female evolves into like Nidorina, it turns green. And not green, blue. And blue is the color that Selma wears on The Simpsons. Nidoran male is purple and looks more like Patty. <laughs> and according to Homer, they're both very poisonous. Alright, now I'll actually end the episode. I'm not gonna bother to fill the national decks, that would take way too long. See you later, everyone. Thanks for watching.